Hey guys, Icy Cat here. With the launch of Operation Void Edge, it's time to take a look at the newest defender, Oryx. This beast of a roamer will take you down fast if you're not ready for his new movement mechanics. So we'll take a look at how to deal with that, as well as tips and tricks to use his ability to give the defenders some unique tricks that help the whole team get the drop on the attackers. <laughs> New to this season's roster is Defensive Operator Oryx. He's a two-speed, two-armor character, purpose-built for roaming. Let's start by taking a look at his loadout. His primary SMG is the MP5. Though this is the same one that Doc and Rook have, it's limited by having no ACOG option for Oryx. It's still every bit as solid, though, with 27 damage and a 30-round magazine. His shotgun option is Valkyrie's Spas 12. At 35 damage and a 7 round capacity, it's an acceptable shotgun, though it has a tighter cone of fire than other shotguns and does less environmental damage compared to some others in the same category. Secondary weapons are a choice between the Bela 410, which is Maestro and Alibi's pocket shotgun revolver at 30 damage and 5 rounds, plus has very short range, or the USP-40 with much higher 48 damage and 12 round capacity, using a much longer range. Either way, definitely make sure you have a shotgun in either the Spas 12 or as a secondary bailiff so you can open the rotations as you find them. Secondary gadgets are going to be barbed wire or deployable camera. Now let's take a look at the ability Oryx brings to the team. He's literally a human impact grenade, using his ability to burst through walls, leaving giant Hulk-shaped holes in his wake. To see this coming at you is nothing less than mildly terrifying. He has an unlimited amount of these. They charge to a maximum of three held in reserve. No matter how many he has when he breaks through a wall, it uses up all the remaining charges he has stored up before refilling again. Each time Oryx does this, he loses 10 health. Even wearing Rook armor won't help you with the loss in health. It's still the full 10 hit point drop with his armor on. This is mostly a balancing mechanic to make sure he doesn't simply break every wall in the map. Be aware that it is possible to actually kill yourself using your last 10 health going through a wall, so try not to do that. When he bursts through a wall, he has a delay before he can bring his weapon up. It's not instant. If flanking an enemy from behind, they should be able to win the gunfight as they will have more than enough time to spin around and fire before you can bring your weapon up. While using him to roam and flank is quite effective, just remember this major vulnerability when doing it. This ability can also make some really interesting sight modifications and rotations. In rooms like this where two soft surfaces meet with a clean edge, you can even get a two-for-one kind of break, leaving just enough of an opening on each wall to run through. Chain a couple of these together, and you can wind up with lots of subtle rotation options that allow you to access several rooms within a couple of seconds of each other. Sometimes planning rotation options in advance to be flexible later in the round can be the difference between winning and losing as you have way more flanking and rotation options. His dash will not destroy friendly gadgets that are placed on the floor for the most part, but anything placed on a wall when he breaks through it will be destroyed, even if the ground placements wind up surviving. Another thing he cannot destroy is friendly deployable shields. It's just like running into a non-breachable surface and does nothing. The only way he can take one out is by bashing an attacker into one directly. His dash serves other important functions besides just Hulk smashing walls. He can also smash through wooden barricades on doors and windows. This does not cause him to lose any health and does not force him to use up more than one of his charges at a time like smashing through walls do. When doing this on windows, he will never be carried over the windowsill. He also cannot hurt repelling attackers right on the other side of the barricade with the dash. This ability can be useful for getting a quick surprise on them from another angle they're not expecting to burst open. This also works with castle barricades just the same. He takes no damage while smashing through, and it only uses one of his charges. You should note, though, that Castle does not get the smash panel added back into his inventory the same way he would if it was pulled down with the crowbar. The game treats the armor panel as being totally destroyed in this case, just as if it was hit by explosives. His dash doesn't even have to impact anything to be useful. He can chain a couple of these dashes together in rapid order to cover lots of ground quickly. While he's dashing, he's locked into a straight path and can't turn until the dash completes, so be sure of your direction or else you may find yourself running into things awkwardly that you didn't mean to. This dash is useful to roam with while covering more area much more quickly or displacing a known position after having been droned out. Alternatively, it can be a spawn rusher's dream. Doing a double dash will cover a lot of the ground towards a spawn position before the two second detection threshold goes off, giving spawning attackers very little warning before you pop around the corner shooting and then dash back again. As expected, his dash is not slowed down by friendly barbed wire at all. One of the funnest things you can do with Oryx is to break furniture. 
This causes him no health loss at all, and as long as he keeps recharging his ability, he can do this an unlimited amount of times with zero penalty. This is very useful for opening up sight lines that might otherwise need an impact grenade or lots of shotgun blasts. In bomb mode, this is especially important as you begin to take away cover for the attackers to plant behind while you hold unique new open sight lines through the skeletons of the exploded furniture pieces. It's not just limited to objective though. On many maps, you can find all kinds of furniture placement that opens up brand new angles that were hard or impossible to take advantage of before. It can also be used to declutter an area with lots of furniture and give more positioning options in general. And it's incredibly fun to do. Oryx also has another ability apart from his dash, the ability to jump and climb up hatches. There's no limit on the number of times he can do this, and it doesn't count against his charges as it's a totally separate function. This works kind of like a defensive variation on Amaru. There's some minor limitations on his jump and climb agility. It only works on hatches. You cannot grab ledges, skylights, rappel points, or anything else. Only hatches. Another thing is you're blocked from trying to do this on roof hatches. This red symbol appears when looking up at one so you know it's an invalid target. The height of the hatch really doesn't matter. Twice his standing height? No problem. Up he goes. This allows him incredible rotation options as he can travel from the basement to the top floor of a map in seconds depending on how close hatches are to each other. With the ability to move both down and up floors in a matter of seconds, it's very easy to get surprised by a roaming oryx as a callout in basement garage a few seconds ago has you suddenly running into him on the top floor before you even know what happened. The ability works one of two ways. You can either press the climb button or press and hold. If you press and hold, he'll jump and climb all in one seamless motion. If you press lightly, he'll grab and hold, but not actually pull himself up, and he'll just hang there with his head and shoulders sticking up only. This allows him to see if the area is safe or not before he fully commits. If it's not, you can choose to drop back down again or just hang there pretty much as long as you want. It's a very effective way to pop up behind someone when they think they've cleared the room. There's even a little trick you can do with this by hiding while you hang. Because there's so little of his character model that's actually exposed, and it's right down on the floor, you can further disguise his head and shoulders by hiding it in some spools of barbed wire. As you can see here, a casual sweep of the room makes it almost impossible to see Oryx hiding in the barbed wire. Once you turn your back to his position and assume it's safe, that allows him to come up behind you for the surprise flank. As if all that wasn't enough, he can also use his ability like a charging bull and knock people over. This causes no actual damage to Oryx or his target. Getting hit by it is the same as being hit by a Nomad air jab without sending Oryx flying. Most interesting of all is that this works on shield operators too, including a fully extended Montane shield. He does have a slight delay before pulling up his weapon, so if you want to cause damage, you'll have to be fast to take advantage of the opening. If you knock them against a hard wall immediately behind them, they seem to get up a little faster than if they go flying further. Plus, you have an extra half second or so to get your weapon ready, so this is a little more effective either in the open or against a soft wall where they have room to fly. This only works against enemies. Oryx cannot send his teammates flying. If you run into a friendly, he'll just sort of slide to the side a little bit. This prevents team trolling and also makes it so you can't get free wall breaks by using your teammates as bowling pins to avoid the 10 hit point loss you do when you do it to yourself. If you time it right, you can actually melee kill a charging oryx. Timing is everything, and you need to be angled down with your reticle looking at about his waist or knees, as he lowers his hitbox once the charge begins. Doing this will result in a kill if you time it right. This works with both knife melees and shield melees. There's several effective combos here on defense. Pairing up with a mirror on a soft wall, he can break right through while seeing what's on the other side and surprising them. But you might want to make sure your mirror is okay with their gadget being destroyed like that first. An even more important one is Doc. Given that he loses 10 health every time he breaches a wall, that will add up really quickly and leave him in a pretty damaged state. When paired with Doc though, he doesn't have to worry about that. In the beginning of the round, you can safely do some site modifications or rotation route prep, and when you're done with all the breaching, just head back to be healed up to full health. Make the most of it and go for up to four wall breaches at a loss of 40 hit points during the prep phase, and then have Doc heal you up to 100 health again with just one stim dart. Okay, so with all this human wrecking ball can do, how do you counter him? Well, there's no true hard counter. What you have to counter is his general movement, using direct or indirect measures. Let's start with claymores. These work against his movement types in a couple of ways. 
If you anticipate he might break through a wall, pre-placing a claymore will net you the kill. You can also use them to cut off hatches for Oryx to jump through. With the lasers overhead, he'll know he can't jump up, but if you place them like this, he might be able to shoot the claymore through a soft floor from below. A smarter way to use them is to place them so the beams stop just short of the edge. He won't see them from below when he makes his jump, and as soon as his arm and head pop up, it'll detonate, giving you the surprise kill. Be careful on door placements though, as his dash can allow him to clear a claymore in some circumstances. If only one laser beam is showing, he can actually dash through it and set the trap off, but not take any damage. If more than one laser beam is showing, he cannot dash through it safely though. Another way he can be countered is with Sophia's stun launcher. Taking a hit while charging will stop him in his tracks. This is kind of situational though, as it's really easier to just shoot him than switch but in the right circumstances, you can interrupt him with it. Then there's Nomad's air jabs. They don't work any differently on him than they do on anyone else, but as he runs around all over the map with his focus on roaming, they're still effective. Placing them on a spot where you think he may run through a wall can be effective as soon as he runs through it. They're also useful as hatch denial, either going up or coming down. The air jab does not detonate until his feet are on the floor though, so he'll have to complete his climb or fall animation before it goes off. Another movement-based counter is Track Stingers. They interrupt his dash and combined with the damage can cause Oryx to try to find a different route rather than face a hallway full of them. Likewise, Lion Scans being useful against movement in general will show Oryx if he uses his ability while that's going on as well. Given that his thing is moving all over the map very quickly, especially through the use of breaches and hatch rotations, his most effective counter is probably going to be Jackal who can at least figure out where he is in all of his running around. While choosing to scan his location can be effective, Oryx's ability to displace up and down different floors of the map might make a scan tag feed you false location information if he's suddenly on a new floor, which might make a more stealthy footprint follow with no scan a slightly better option. As mentioned, Oryx is designed to be a roamer. While Kavera does it quietly, Oryx doesn't even bother being subtle about it. But what he lacks in discretion, he more than makes up for in positioning options. Paired up with the Cav, she could take advantage of the breach rotations he's already made in a more stealthy way. There can be a temptation to think that your brute strength translates to some kind of invulnerability, or at least extra toughness. Leaping twice your height while force running and smashing through walls like the Hulk will do that to you, but you're still just a regular two-speed, two-armor at the end of the day when the bullets come your way. He opens up new options for roamers that have never been explored before on defense, and that alone makes him a very unique and fun addition to the team. Tomorrow, we'll take a look at Yana's operator profile and see how to get the most out of her abilities, as well as tips and tricks. Later on, we'll be taking a closer look at the new map and how to get the most out of it, as well as developing news and information. Also, check out our weekly podcast, Rainbow Six Radio, where we discuss everything that's going on in the game and the community. I'll put some links for that below the video player, and you can also find it on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or pretty much anywhere you find your favorite podcasts. That's Rainbow Six Radio. So if you haven't already, please do like and subscribe. You can also follow me over at IcyCat25 on either Facebook or Twitter. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.